And joining us now here in the studio is Mike Lake. Mike is the Conservative MP for Edmonton Millwoods Beaumont, and he's joined today by his son, Jaden. And we're happy to welcome both of you here at TVO. It's good to be here. Mike, I want to start by uh, playing some tape. Sure. Because yesterday in the House of Commons, something rare happened. You started talking, and everybody shut up. You could hear a pin drop in that place. I was there mm -hmm. up in the gallery, and I could hear this speech, and it's one of the most wonderful things I've ever heard in the House of Commons. So, Jaden, we're going to start by playing this tape, okay? <laughs> you can watch this. You saw it yesterday. You were there. You were there, right? Roll tape, please. Mr. Speaker, today is World Autism Awareness Day. It also marks 14 years since my son Jaden was diagnosed with autism. In many ways, Jaden's like a three or four year old trapped in a 16 year old's body. He's nonverbal, has trouble with abstract concepts, will cry when sad, and squeal loudly or giggle when happy. When something gets on his mind, he'll grab my face and inquire with an escalating ba 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 until he gets the explanation he needs to move on with his life. He's obsessed with dogs to the point where he'll go nose to nose with any dog he sees, regardless of size or demeanor, something we must always be aware of when out in public. In some ways, Jaden is very much like other 16-year-olds. He loves making chocolate chip cookies, working in the school library, and bowling with dad on Saturday mornings. Mr. Speaker, I never dreamt I'd have a son with special needs, but I can honestly say I couldn't be more proud of my boy. He is always quick with a high five or a kiss, is never ever a bully, and loves everyone without a hint of judgment. I think we could all use a little more of that. Mike, there wasn't a dry eye in the house when you finished that speech. I know you know mm -hmm. that. But let's go through this. What is autism? Well, that's a, that's a big question, actually. Uh, I can maybe walk you through what our experience was like. And uh, uh, when Jaden was probably around one and a half to two years old, he's having a drink of his water here. He likes to drink water. When he was one and a half to two years old, he, uh, he wouldn't respond when we would call him, when we would uh, you know, call him to the room, or even if he was sitting right in the room with us and we said his name, he didn't recognize it. Uh, wouldn't look at us for anything. He would be immersed in whatever it was that had his attention at that time. Um, whether it was watching Barney on TV or playing with something, something usually fairly simple and insignificant. And uh, yeah, you like Barney, don't you? Yeah. He's actually gotten into Barney again lately. He's, so when he hears me say it, he's found Barney on YouTube and he likes to still watch uh, uh, Barney videos. He's a little bit nostalgic. He hadn't seen them for years. But uh, yeah, we would, we would uh, call him and he wouldn't respond. Then we at first thought he was a little bit, uh, had a little bit of a tough time hearing, uh, but when we would uh, turn on a video from two floors away, he would come running downstairs and, uh, and uh, watch the video that he so liked. His hearing was so fine. we knew that his hearing was just fine. Yeah. There was something else going on. At the same time, he would uh, uh, really, t to him, we were kind of tools to get what he wanted. So he would literally, he would uh, come find us if he wanted something from the pantry chocolate chips or just anything that he liked to eat from the pantry and he would come find us he'd literally grab our hand and drag us to the pantry and when we got there he would uh, grab us by the sleeve and uh, he'd lift our hand up towards what he wanted and uh, and make us grab it and give it to him and did that you was, have any uh, idea what it was we had no idea at the time actually we uh, in fact I had a cousin that mentioned autism uh, at a wedding that we were at uh, before his second birthday and we kind of discounted it because we thought surely the doctors would have uh, told us if, uh, if he had autism because we were asking questions of the doctors at the time and they were sending us more on the speech path uh, to, to try and uh, look into ways to, to try and encourage him to talk because he wasn't talking either. And uh, it was my, my mom that, uh, Jaden's had, Jaden's had a busy couple of days, we've done a lot of interviews so uh, <laughs> he, he, might, he, he might yawn from time to time, he loves doing the interviews, but it was anyway, it was my mom. That, uh, that had read a book called Let Me Hear Your Voice. And in that book, it talked about a mother's uh, discovery that her child had autism and then everything she did afterwards to, uh, to address that. But as she was in the phase of the book where it was talking about uh, this mother who had the child with autism and it was describing the child, as we read it when she gave us the book, it was describing Jaden to a T. And then you knew. And then we knew. Uh, do you know how he got it? You know what? That's a that's a really good question. Uh, we don't, and that's what uh, research is looking into right now. Uh, um, there's uh, quite a bit of evidence out there that says there's a genetic 
component of some sort or another. Um, and there's a lot of work going on in something called the Autism Genome Project in that area. And in fact, Canadian researchers uh, across the country, uh, some right here in Toronto, uh, Steve Shearer, for example, in Toronto, mm -hmm. Peter Zatmari at McMaster, uh, Lonnie Zwagenbaum out in, uh, in Edmonton, uh, are working as part of this worldwide uh, initiative to try and discover some of the genetic components. Um, we know that it's five times more prevalent in boys than girls. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes you see siblings with it. So there has to be some form of genetic component, but uh, there's a lot of research going on to, to determine what else might be at play there. Presumably there is a continuum between very low functioning and very high functioning people who have autism. Absolutely. Where's Jaden on the continuum? You know, it's, it's tough. Uh, we often say uh, when we bring Jaden for an interview like this, Jaden is one person with autism. And so when you see Jaden, you see one person. He's not necessarily, it's hard to peg him specifically somewhere on a continuum because in some areas he's quite severe. The fact that he doesn't talk, for example, he's completely nonverbal, uh, would be fairly severe. Uh, but in other areas, in terms of his uh, sort of level of aggression, those kind of things, uh, he's not nearly as severe as, as others would be. Does so he understand you? Um, he, 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 we think that he understands the concrete stuff pretty well. So uh, he understands nouns, talking about uh, people, talking about uh, um, things like, uh, if, if we say Jaden, actually I should be careful what I ask him because he might say yes, but if we ask him if he wants something that he likes, mm -hmm. he, will, uh, he will say yes and uh, vehemently say yes if I was to say it right now, so I'll, I'll avoid that. Um, but uh, actually, uh, maybe I'll say something that we can get him afterwards. So if I was to say to him, Jaden, um, do you want uh, some Smarties? Jaden, actually in this case, yeah. So if I was to ask him that, he probably would like Smarties, right? You like Smarties, don't you? Yeah, they're pretty yummy, hey? Yeah, we'll get you some Smarties after the show. Does that sound good? If maybe we go after the show and we'll get you some Smarties? Does that sound good? And he likes dogs, so if I mention dogs, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. And when we were playing the clip and it mentioned dogs, he even got excited about the dogs. Um, I notice he grabs your face yeah, quite a bit. he does. He, uh, I mentioned that in the clip, how he grabs mm -hmm. the face and, and he will do the, the babas. And, uh, he wants you looking yeah, at him, Mike. Yeah, you he does that? want because yeah. he, he really wants me to, right now he just wants me to talk about dogs. Oh. You know, the fact that he likes dogs. There's none around here right now, but he likes mm -hmm. the fact that I talk about dogs. If we get talking about schedule, like anything to do with our schedule or our oh. plans, you can see that he gets, uh, he gets quite engaged <laughs> and he loves to walk oh. through the schedule. He loves to look at it on paper. He wants me right now, when I say schedule, I can tell him that tonight you're gonna, we're going to stay in Toronto, Jaden, and then you and Mummy and Janae are going to stay in, in, uh, in Toronto with your cousins, right? And Daddy's going to fly to Ottawa tomorrow, and then Daddy's going to come back to Toronto on Thursday, and we're all going to be together, and then on Monday, you guys are going to fly back home. Right? Home is Edmonton. And, yeah, home to Edmonton, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Daddy's going to go to Ottawa for one more night, and then Daddy's going to come home on, on Tuesday. Does that sound good? Does that sound good? Yeah? High yeah. fives. There we go. Oh. There you go. Is Jaden on any kind of medication? Does he do therapy? What's the story there? Uh. At this point, he's not on any medication. Um, and, and it's not that we're entirely close to, to using it at some point if we need to. Mike, you can but, look at him. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. want you looking at me, so that's okay. <laughs> but... Uh, but uh, he's uh, but in terms of therapy, he's had uh, he's had therapy since he was two and a half years old. Mm -hmm. So when he was two and a half, we had workers come into the house about 36 hours a week and uh, do one-on-one -on -one therapy with him, intensive behavioral I intervention. Uh, it started really. Remember, what I was saying I, we couldn't get his attention. I mean, it really started by trying to get him to even just look. Um, and they would take something as simple as a spoon and say, Jaden, give me the spoon. And so you'd put a spoon in front of Jaden. Do you remember this when you were when you were a little little boy? And they would put a spoon in front of them, and they would say, Jaden, give me the spoon, and they would stand there with their hand open, like this, and then they would force, he wouldn't do it, but naturally, and they would force his hand to grab the spoon, and then he's bored even talking about it, I guess, because <laughs> it was so repetitive at the time. But no, they, he would grab the spoon, and he would put it, they would put it, in his, make him put it in their hand, right. and they would do that over and over and over again, until eventually, he did it. And there are a lot of rewards in that. I mentioned he liked Smarties. So uh, at the time, they would oftentimes have Smarties there, and, and when they did it, they would grab the spoon, they would put it in his hand, and then he'd get a Smartie. And eventually, he had to do it himself to get that Smartie. And it was really interesting how that worked back then. We should just explain, sometimes Jaden looks over my shoulder, not yeah. now, but sometimes he does, because your wife and daughter are over behind the other uh, camera there. That's right, that's right, yeah, so. Does Jaden go to school? Jaden does, he's in a grade 10 classroom. Do you like school? What's your favorite part of school? Do you like the library? You work in the library, don't you? Yeah. 
So his uh, his job at school, he he goes there more for the social aspect of things, not so much the the educational aspect. He most of the things at the grade 10 level would be very difficult for him. Oh. Um, but in the, in the library, what they do is they've, they've got an aide that works with them all the time, and she'll take him to the library sever, several times during the week, and he'll put books away and things like that. Uh, uh, and they say that he does it as fast as any 16-year-old they've ever had work in the library. And in fact, what they've done is transitioned so that he goes to the Edmonton Public Library. Now, the aide takes him there as part of the school day, and they've got a program there where he can, uh, he can work putting books away. And the other thing that they've done that's really cool at the school this year, and we haven't seen it in action yet, so it'll be interesting. These, are, these experiments are always interesting to see in action. You look at your questions mm -hmm. right now. But uh, he is taking musical theater. And so they have him playing an interesting role as an old man. He doesn't say anything, but he walks across the stage. And do you have a cane? Is that what your, 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 your job as an old man? Do you carry a cane when you go across the stage? Yeah, and do you have a cup in your hand? Yeah, oh yeah, found it. <laughs> you there you go. go. And so he has a cup in his hand, and he has a cane, and they just keep working on, working on him, working on him, working on him, showing him to walk across the stage, mm. bent over with a cane and a cup in his hand, and that'll be his role in the play. And the kids embrace it. The kids love having him as part of it. Can he draw pictures or write or something Well, actually, like it's that. interesting, He's, he was, pulling uh, open his iPhone right now. Oh. He's got an iPhone that he, he uses to talk. He uses it more to talk in the, uh, in the classroom, and the, the aide works on him to communicate with kids. Uh, he can type things in. He can actually write, if he wants a cookie or something like that, he would write the word cookie down. Okay. Um, you know, he doesn't deal very well with abstracts, so it has to be something concrete. But, uh, and he won't generally ask it as a full question automatically. We work on him with that. But he'll just generally write cookie if he wants one. Mm -hmm. He's very yeah. affectionate with you. He is, yeah. And he's, he's hearing things that I talk about that engage him. Mm -hmm. This is what life's like at home. When he, hears, when he hears things that I talk about that engage him, he, he uh, wants me to keep talking about them or wants mm -hmm. more answers. Right now, he's trying to put his, his hand in my mouth, which he knows he's not supposed to do, right? You can't put your hand in my mouth. Oh, that's yucky. <laughs> that's yucky. <laughs> Mike, I'm going to go to the opposite side of this sure. debate, which is, as you know, there is um, a remarkable uptick in the autistic diagnoses that are happening these days. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, this is not the, the case in Jaden's case, but do you, you know, through your travels on this subject, mm -hmm. do you think that the, uh, the profession is overdiagnosing autism today? You know what, I'm not, I'm not uh, an expert enough to comment on that. I think that probably um, when you look at those numbers, the one in 88 that they're talking about now, I think it's one in 54 boys. I mean, those are certainly, regardless, those are alarming numbers. Um, in terms of the diagnosis, it's certainly probably accurate to say that there's more diagnosis happening now than there was in the past. But remember, when Jaden was two, they wouldn't diagnose them with autism. It took a long time to get to that point. Hmm. And uh, we had come a long, time, a long way before that point to get to where we were at that time. So I think we're getting, seeing better diagnosis, uh, which is leading a little bit to those numbers. And I do think that there's more prevalence. Uh, you know, as I walk around today, parents with, of kids with autism recognize autism when they see it. Hmm. And I, I feel like I recognize a lot more of it now than I did, say, 10 or 12 years ago even. Do we have um, early screening programs now? I think we're doing a better job, but I think we've still got a long ways to go. Right now at the federal level, we have a surveillance project that's ongoing that has experts from across the country working on you know, defining, defining exactly what it is and uh, methods to recognize it across the country and then uh, quantify it so that we can tell you know, if there's pockets of the country that have more autism than other places. We want to know those kind of things. And uh, this is a, an important project that's going on right now. Is there a, is there a fear of misdiagnosis in the early stages? Um, you know, I would say, I guess you, it, it would be easy to say you wouldn't want to be diagnosed and go through all of the stress and, and find out that that was wrong. Uh, on the flip side, I guess I'd rather have my child misdiagnosed and have intensive behavioral therapy being done mm -hmm. to try and help him or her than not diagnosed and miss that op window of opportunity because the intensive behavioral uh, therapy, that it, it, it does work. It's going to have an impact, obviously, on any kid that would have it, not just mm -hmm. kids with autism. Uh, much of the attention when we talk about autism is focused on, obviously, young people who have it. Mm -hmm. uh, you almost see or hear nothing about autistic adults. Mm -hmm. uh, but presumably that's, I mean, this guy's going to be an autistic adult someday, oh, right? Oh, for sure. And, and we talk a lot about lifespan issues. Mm -hmm. So you've got, uh, you know, you've got the kids, you know, the, the two-and-a-half to six-year-old that uh, needs that early diagnosis. They, they need some form of intensive uh, therapy early on. Uh, and I think the evidence proves that. But then those kids are going to go to school. 
and uh, they're going to go through the school system from 6 to 18 or 19 or 20 in some cases, and uh, maybe a little bit of a different program, continuing the momentum that they had early on and uh, going through that system, uh, the social aspect of school and all of those things. Uh, at, the, at the time that they're getting ready to, to come out of school, or well before probably, there needs to be a transition plan and, and a focus on vocational opportunities that uh, might exist and what life's going to look like after school. One of the things you have to remember is that there's no lifespan issue with autism. Uh, Jaden, barring you know, the fact that, that people with autism are less aware of danger, hmm. other, than, other than that aspect, uh, the they'll life. live as long as you or I will live. Right. And so uh, you know, they, 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 there's that vocational element. And then I think all parents of, of kids with autism or people, family of people with autism will say, there is that concern. What happens when we're not there? Hmm. Because we'll have always been there, right? And, and what happens when we're gone? Uh, I noticed both of you are wearing the blue puzzle pin. Right. What's that? It's, uh, it's the, the, the blue puzzle pin is a piece from Autism Speaks, an organization called Autism Speaks, uh, founded by Bob and Suzanne Wright uh, out of the, the U.S. Uh, I can't remember how many years ago, and now has extended to, uh, to Canada and, and really moving worldwide. And uh, they, the, the, the puzzle piece, you can see I'm actually wearing two pins today. You've got the, the ribbon, which is the more generic uh, symbol of autism, but both of them implement the puzzle piece. Autism mm -hmm. is a puzzle, and it's funny because I, before I ever knew about the puzzle piece as a symbol, we often referred to our, our circumstance with Jaden as a puzzle. And just the fact that, that uh, you know, we don't know the whole picture but we have to focus on, on the, the part of the puzzle that we're aware of, that we've got uh, in Jade, and, and really focus on how do we make his life better. And uh, trust that God has a picture, you know, a view of the overall puzzle in mind uh, when he's looking at everything, you know what I mean? Mm. Every parent has hopes and dreams and expectations for their child or children. Mm -hmm. So what are yours for him? You know what, I, I, uh, I hope that he can continue to be happy. You know, he is a, he's a genuinely, Jaden, Jaden, are, are you a happy kid? You're happy, right? Yeah, yeah, with your life? You like, to, you like your friends at school? Do your friends treat you pretty well? Yeah, he's got something on his hand here that he, he uh, is very focused on right now. But he is, he's a very happy kid. And uh, we, we hope that he can continue to be happy, continue to build relationships with people, continue to have close relationships with the people that he already has relationships with, um, that he can contribute. And when I... When I say contribute, you know, when I think of contributing for Jaden, I think of, you know, Jaden and another person being able to contribute more than that other person could contribute on their own. You know, I'm not caught up in, uh, you know, in, in output in the, you know, general productive economic sense when I think of Jaden. I, I, I want him to be able to contribute in a way that's meaningful to him and, uh, and, and, and in a way that, that he's happy. And, uh, and to, to make sure that when we are gone one day, that there are people surrounding him that love him as much as we do and are aware of what he's going through. And at the same time, um, you know, the, the, when I think of meaning in Jaden's life, uh, you know, we're really thankful for the opportunity to do what we're doing right now, to, uh, um, to talk to you, to raise awareness so people get a chance to at least see one face of a person with autism and hear the story, and maybe that they might recognize it in other people and be able to, to instead of shaking their heads when they see a, a child in a, in a grocery store throw down, uh, lay down and have a tantrum, maybe they'll recognize it as something a little bit different and uh, step in and, and pat, pat someone on the back and, and offer a helping hand, right? Mike, it's awfully good of you and Jaden to visit us here at TVO tonight. Thanks very much. Thank you for having us. Give him a high five, Jaden. Yeah. <laughs> and now he's got to look at the questions again. <laughs> good job. Give me five. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.